Hello friends, welcome to Bookworm Gardens. I'm Ashley. And I'm Kathy. And we're going to take you on a poetry field trip of Bookworm Gardens. Poetry appears in many different forms, styles, and places. Some poetry follows rules, and some poetry flows free. Let's go see what poetry we can find in Bookworm Gardens. First, let's head down the sidewalk to Goodnight Moon. Welcome to Goodnight Moon. Goodnight Moon by Margaret Wise Brown is a poem many of us read when we were small or read to someone who is small. This poem encourages a young bunny to go to bed. Let's read a little bit. Goodnight Room. Goodnight Moon. Good night, cow, jumping over the moon. Good night, light and the red balloon. Good night, bears. Good night, chairs. Good night, kittens. And good night, mittens. This poem says good night to things around the room in rhyme. Do you think you could write a poem saying good night to things in your room? Let's try to write a poem about the things in this garden. Good night, plant. Good night, ant. Good night, flowers. Good night, towers. Good night, big trees. Good night, little bees. Whew. I think I'm ready for a nap. Oh, Ashley, I'm too excited to take a nap. Let's go back to the gate and go inside. Let's go! Where the sidewalk ends. This is where the traditional sidewalk outside of the fence ends and where our magical walkways within the fence begin. Where the Sidewalk Ends is a book of poems and drawings by Shel Silverstein. Where the Sidewalk Ends. There is a place where the sidewalk ends and before the street begins. And there the grass grows soft and white. And there the sun burns crimson bright. And there the moon bird rests from his flight to the cool in the peppermint wind. Let us leave this place where the smoke blows black and the dark street winds and bends, past the pits where the asphalt flowers grow. We shall walk with a walk that is measured and slow and watch where the chalk white arrows go to a place where the sidewalk ends. Yes, we'll walk with a walk that is measured and slow and we'll go where the chalk white arrows go for the children they mark and the children they know the place where the sidewalk ends. This book has poems about dancing pants and Captain Hook and even Sarah Cynthia Sylvia Stout who would not take the garbage out. I would like to read just one more poem for you today and it is titled Sick. I cannot go to school today, said little Peggy Ann McKay. I have the measles and the mumps, a gash, a rash, and purple bumps. My mouth is wet, my throat is dry. I'm going blind in my right eye. My tonsils are as big as rocks. I've counted 16 chicken pox. And there's one more, that's 17. And don't you think my face looks green? My leg is cut, my eyes are blue. It might be instamatic flu. I cough and sneeze and gasp and choke. I'm sure that my left leg is broke. My hip hurts when I move my chin. My belly button's caving in. 
My back is wrenched, my ankles sprained, my appendix pains each time it rains. My nose is cold, my toes are numb. I have a sliver in my thumb. My neck is stiff and my voice is weak. I hardly whisper when I speak. My tongue is filling up my mouth. My hair is falling out. My elbows bent, my spine ain't straight. My temperature is 108. My brain is shrunk, I cannot hear. There is a hole inside my ear. I have a hangnail and my heart is, what? What's that? What did you say? You said today is Saturday? Goodbye, I'm going out to play. What was that Peggy Ann McKay up to? Well, there is no time to be sick today. Let's see what Ashley has for us next. Look at my furry friend here. What animal does she remind you of? A llama? Is your mama a llama? Uses poetry and rhymes to help you solve riddles. Can you solve one? Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Dave. No, she is not, is the answer Dave gave. She hangs by her feet and she lives in a cave. I do not believe that's how llamas behave. Oh, I said, you are right about that. I think that your mama sounds more like a bat. Did you solve that riddle? Riddles are a lot of fun. Llama here lives in a garden filled with plants that are named after animals. Let's see some now. This is lamb's ear. It's very fuzzy, just like a lamb's ear. And this is a plant called pig squeak. When you rub its leaves together, it gives a little squeak like a pig. As our garden grows and changes with the seasons, you'll see zebra grass, turtle heads, elephant ears, and many more. I could use a bathroom break. Let's make a quick stop. Let's take a look at the bugs for lunch garden in the boys' bathroom. Bugs for Lunch, written by Marjorie Facklum and illustrated by Sylvia Law. If your lunch was a bug, what could you be? Maybe a mouse eating insects in somebody's house. You could be a toad zapping a fly with a flip of the tongue in a blink of an eye. Or maybe a mantis ready to prey on any size insect that happens your way. You could be a bear searching for honey, but finding that bees taste just as yummy. Hmm, what are you going to have for lunch today? Mm, I don't think I'm ready to eat a bug for lunch, but we have a bug here at Bookworm Gardens who would like to eat you. Let's take a walk through our inchworm. This is my friend, Horton the Elephant. You might notice something strange about Horton. He's in a tree. That's not something we would normally see. But in a Dr. Seuss poem, anything can happen. In the book, Horton Hatches the Egg, Dr. Seuss has written a story about Horton the Elephant who sits on an egg for a very lazy bird named Maisie. Let's take a look inside.
He sat all that day and he kept the egg warm. He sat all that night through a terrible storm. It poured and it lightning, it thundered, it rumbled. This isn't much fun, the poor elephant grumbled. I wish she'd come back because I'm cold and I'm wet. I hope that Maisie bird doesn't forget. Horton kept sitting there day after day and soon it was autumn, the leaves blew away and then came the winter, the snow and the sleet and icicles hung from his trunk and his feet. But Horton kept sitting there and he said with a sneeze, I'll stay on this egg and I won't let it freeze. I meant what I said and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful, 100%. Horton never gave up and he was rewarded for his patience and perseverance with something brand new, an elephant bird. Dr. Seuss poems are a lot of fun. Follow me to another Dr. Seuss book here at the gardens. We've arrived at the pond, or as we like to call it, Megalodot's pool. In this book, Dr. Seuss describes some of the fish we might see in our pond. You might see a fish with a pinwheel tail. Or you might see a fish who has fins like a sail. You might see some young fish, some high jumping fiskers. Or you might see an old one with long flowing whiskers. You might see a fish with a long curly nose. Or you might see a fish like a rooster that crows. You might see a fish with a checkerboard belly. Or even a fish made of strawberry jelly. Let's take a look and see what kind of fish we have in our pond. The fish are fun. Let's see if we can find another book about animals. Meet Blue, the little blue truck. This narrative poem tells a story, making the voices of a narrator and characters, and it rhymes. In this story, a friendly small blue truck and his animal friends help a not so friendly stranger, a big yellow truck get out of the mud. Let's read a few pages from Little Blue Truck, written by Alice Shirtle and illustrated by Jill McElroy. Cluck, said the chicken, and her chick said, peep. Ma, said the goat. Blue said, beep. Nay, said a horse. Quack, said a duck. Beep, said the friendly little blue truck. Honk, yelled a dump truck. Coming through, I've big important things to do. I haven't got time to pass the day with every duck along the way. Thanks, little brother, said the dump to blue. You helped me and they helped you. Now I see a lot depends on a helping hand from a few good friends. I love a happy ending. Now let's walk over to the woodlands to one of our more quiet, calming gardens. Here in the Japanese garden, we find the book, One Leaf Rides the Wind by Celeste Davidson Manis. This is a book of haiku. Haiku is a form of poetry that originated in Japan hundreds of years ago. The poems are short, but they use sensory language to paint a big picture. Haiku is written in a three line format. The first line has five syllables, the second line seven syllables, and the third line five again. Let's read a few poems from the book one leaf rides the wind.
One leaf rides the wind. Quick as I am, it's quicker, just beyond my grasp. Two carved temple dogs snarling over my shoulder. Sit, guard the garden. Suddenly I'm tall, a miniature forest, three pots on a wall. Next, let's head over to our creative gateway. There are many ways to be creative. Making art, dancing, playing music, and poetry. We will end this field trip today with a poem from Joyful Noise by Paul Fleshman. In this book, we can create booming, boisterous, joyful noise when two voices are used to read a poem. The two parts mesh, just like a musical duet. Today, we'll be reading the poem titled Firefly. Light, Light is the ink we use. Night, Night is our parchment. We're fireflies. Fireflies flickering. flitting, flashing. Fireflies glimmering. Fireflies gleaming. Glowing insect, insect calligraphers, calligraphers. Practicing penmanship. Copying sentences. Six-legged six scribblers, scribblers, scribblers. Of vanishing messages. Fleeting graffiti. Fine, fine artists, artists in flight. flight. Adding dabs of light. Bright brush strokes. Signing, signing the June, June nights, nights as, as if they, they were paintings. paintings. We're fireflies, fireflies, fireflies. I had a lot of fun reading a poem with you. Maybe you could write a poem with a partner and go out and make your own joyful noise. <laughs>